Next, I will show how to apply the one mean t procedure. But first, we have to discuss the assumptions. In one mean z procedure, one major assumption was made that is rarely satisfied. It is very unlikely for anyone to know the population standard deviation without knowing the population mean. So what do we do in a real life scenario? Naturally, when a population parameter is not known, we can use a sample statistic as a non-biased estimate. So it is very natural to use the sample standard deviation S instead of the unknown population standard deviation sigma. As a result, the sample mean of a sample of size n is not normally distributed anymore, but rather has another well-studied distribution called student t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. From the practical point of view, the effects of this change are very simple. We can still use the same procedure, but need to replace sigma and z alpha over 2 with s and t alpha over 2, respectively. For the procedure to work, the following assumptions must be made. The sample is simple random, and the central limit theorem must be applicable, that is, at least one of the following must be true. Either the sample size n is greater than 30, or the population is normally distributed. Also, the population standard deviation sigma is unknown. Consider the following example. An incubation period is the time between when you contract a virus and when your symptoms start. Assume that the population of incubation periods for a novel coronavirus is normally distributed. By surveying randomly selected local hospitals, a researcher was able to obtain the following sample of incubation periods of 10 patients. 6, 2, 4, 3, 3, 7, 5, 8, 5, 7. Use the sample to construct and interpret a 90% confident interval for the average incubation period of the novel coronavirus. First, let's check if all necessary assumptions are satisfied. The sample is simple random. Check. The population is normally distributed. Check. The population standard deviation, sigma, is unknown. Check. Also, note that the average and the standard deviation of the sample are respectively the average is the sum divided by 10 equals 5, and the standard deviation of the sample is 2. Once the assumptions are verified, we may apply the procedure. We will use the following template to construct and interpret the confidence interval. The unknown parameter in this problem is mu, the mean incubation period. The point estimate is the sample mean, which is equal to 5. How confident are we that the point estimate is equal to exactly the unknown parameter? We have 0% confidence in that. So the new confidence level that we have set up is 90%. So we have to choose the alpha equal to 0.1. So that alpha over 2 is equal to 0.05 and with degrees of freedom equal to 9, which is 10 minus 1, we can find the critical value t alpha over 2 as t 0 0.05, which is equal to 1.83. Next, we can use the formula and compute the margin of error as 1.83 times 
times 2 divided by square root of 10, which is equal to 1.16. And to find the lower bound, we subtract 1.16 from 5 to get 3.84. And to obtain the upper bound, we add 1.16 to 5 to get 6.16. Now we can interpret the results. We are 90% confident that the average incubation period of the novel coronavirus is between 3.84 and 6.16 days. I just showed how to apply the one mean T procedure to construct a confidence interval with a certain level of confidence.